picture, if you will, a teeter-totter with your kids sitting on the very ends. It's very hard to move that teeter-totter with the weight at the very ends. As they move closer to the center, it becomes much easier to move this teeter-totter around. How does teeter-totters relate to sailing? Well, the boat itself is powered by the rig. The rig in the sails is the motor of the boat. Now, when a boat's going through the waves, any energy that's expended by having weight in the bow and weight in the stern is very detrimental to the boat because the power has to come from the rig and is used to lift the bow and lift the stern. That's why we try to keep as much weight out of the bow and the stern as we can and focus it in the middle so that the rig can concentrate on pushing the boat forward and not have to worry about lifting the bow up and down. Hi there. This is the navigation area. As you can see, it has a VHF inclinometer, which tells us how much the boat is healing. And incidentally, if you're over 20 degrees of heel, you're probably using too much heel and the boat's probably sliding sideways. This means you'll either have to reduce sail area or put more weight on the rail. This is the power for the instrumentation. All the instruments on this boat are very sophisticated. They will know the difference between true wind and apparent wind. The true wind is when the boat is standing still, statically, the true wind is what you're feeling. When the boat starts to move ahead, it creates its own wind coming from the front. The difference between that wind coming from the front and the actual wind is called the apparent wind. This computer figures that out for us. Picture the mast as being the center of the teeter-totter that we spoke about before. In an effort to keep the bow light and keep the ends of the teeter-totter light, you'll notice that the bow is very spartan, as was the stern. This is done to try to reduce the pitching moment of the boat. The pitching moment is when the boat is going through the waves. Any effort that is used from the rig to power the ends of the boat going up and down is lost effort. So we keep everything out of the bow, everything out of the stern, try to concentrate the weight in the middle of the boat. I'm going to go through the 10 spots on the boat very quickly. Where I'm sitting now is the tactician's viewpoint. There's so much hustle and bustle going on during a race that the tactician wants to do, he wants to make sure the boat is going where it's going. Next position is the helmsman. He sits ahead of the tactician. He'll sit up here. Now, contrary to what most people think, the helmsman's job is not just to steer the boat. The helmsman's job is actually changing the gears of the boat. He knows when the boat's healing too much. He knows if the boat's going too fast or too slow. There is such a thing as too fast because you could be driving the boat too deep into the tack, going too fast and cutting up, making a wider angle when you're tacking. So the helmsman's job is to keep the boat going at maximum speed all the time. Next position is mainsail. The mainsail trimmer will stand about right here. He's responsible for the trim of the main, the traveler, and he'll work together with the backstay person who's going to be right beside him. The backstay person, in the case of this boat, these are the running backstays, not a permanent backstay. He'll work this at the same time as working the hydraulic system as well. The function of the backstay works together with the mainsail because when the mast is bent, you're going to create a flat sail shape. You have a, a sail shape that has a lot of bag in it when there's a flat, a flat mast. When you ease these backstays off, the mast bends and pulls the sail shape out, flattening the mainsail. That's why these two people have to work very closely together. Next position are the grinders and the sheeters. This is a starboard grinder over here. He'll be cranking, and during attack from starboard to port, this fellow here on the port side will break. He'll let that off. And he's also responsible for making sure that the line clears and goes right around the whole boat. This guy here will be grinding, and we'll have one more guy here sheeting, tailing that sheet. The purpose of that guy after that is not only to cleat the thing, but he has to go down here and watch for the fine trim. He'll be working these car track. The car tracks adjust the, the camber of the sail. The further forward they go, the more depth they put in the sail. The further aft they go, the less depth they do. And also, they open the top of the sail and uh, create more airflow through the top, which helps the boat steady up if you have too much wind. Next position is halyards. A lot of the racing boats now have all the halyards coming back to here. 